It is to believe that this may be the king of all Chinese diesel heaters. This is a new diesel heater that just came out winter 2023, and it's made by a company called H Calorie. Now, from the looks of it, they've taken a lot of interest in customer feedback on what features need to be in a diesel heater in today's market. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you the differences between this older style traditional diesel heater you've seen in a lot of my winter camping videos. And we'll just be unboxing this one today and kind of just going over the differences and why I think this may be the king of all Chinese diesel heaters. So let's get to it. We'll start with the top. Here is your H calorie handbook. We've got a box with a power supply. It's your 120 volt power supply that goes right into the wall outlet very nice some more plastic and then the handle so i think it just pulls out right now let me pull it out and set it on the bench so here it is pretty well protected take off this side foam here and then in the box i've also found a package with i believe your exhaust tubing and everything else to set this up so we've got some clamps here most likely for the exhaust we've got the exhaust tubing for the side here. And then we also have a adapter for 12 volt DC um, into the plug. So if you didn't want to use the house adapter, you can use that, very nice. It's got some lugs on the end to connect to a battery. And then we have a muffler for the exhaust. Now I thought before we go into the setup process, I would just give you my first impressions and kind of share with you Right off the top, what I see is major differences between the two units. Now for this one, it kind of gives me this toolbox, tackle box kind of vibe. Um, it's kind of short and wide, so you have a better base, it feels. This one's tall and narrow, where I have tipped this one over a couple of times while camping, and it's a pretty scary thought. Um, you can widen out the base, but then you're limited on how it packs. Now this one looks like it would pack pretty nice because it's got a flat top with a foldable handle for carrying it around. Whereas this one has two handles and the cap is on top. You can't really stack things on top of it. I'd be worried about how much pressure you can put on this cap, possibly damaging the fuel cell. And it's just kind of awkward stacking things. I really like how it's narrow, so you can stack things this way around it, but I feel like this one might do better stacking it in the back of a Jeep where I have limited storage space. You can go all around it. Now, right off the bat, I've noticed that both enclosures are totally different by shape, but also by material type. This one has a steel enclosure. I've dropped it a couple times, and then I picked it up and just continued on with the use of it. Whereas this one, the top is a molded plastic as well as the bottom, and the middle part here, as you can see, that wraps all the way around the body or the heater in the tank is of a steel construction. The latches are also steel material, which are riveted to the top plastic mold and the metal enclosure. And I'm not sure if I drop this, if it would crack or break. Um, the plastic does feel pretty solid. It's kind of like that Pelican case material. It's got some rigidity to the plastic, but I'm just kind of curious on if it's really as strong as the Pelican style material. But overall, I do like the design and how everything is looking. You've got some storage compartments on the top. You have your thermostat controller on this side and you have your wireless remote on this side. On the bottom here, they put a 90 degree elbow. So you just connect the exhaust right off to the side and you're ready to go. Whereas this one, I had to bring it up with some two by fours and then bend a 90 into that exhaust really tight but there are some things that you have to do to get this set up, whereas you didn't have to do with this setting it up. Now, as far as opening these things up and getting inside of them, obviously this one is gonna be far more quicker. You just undo the steel latches that are provided and you can lift up the top, just like a tackle box or a toolbox. On the older heater, the cover hangs up on the lid, so you have to remove the lid. And then there's also four latches, two on this side and two on this side. The newer heater is much easier to gain access. Now for the power supply connections on the older diesel heater, we just have a screw on type where you can land a positive and a negative 12 volt source. 
And in the back, you got your power supply connections from the motherboard to these connectors. Now, these nuts tend to come loose over time, and they can cause a voltage drop faulting out the unit. But this one did come with a 20 amp fuse, which I really like that as I noticed on the other one did not come with it. This is the style of connection for the power supply. I like this much better. And on the back, you have your push on style terminals that just plug into the back of that connector. Now, following those wires, they go into this connection block, which then goes into the side of the heater. Now, I don't know if the control board in this heater is protected, but I do not like the fact that it doesn't have a fuse. So most likely I'll be implementing a fuse into the battery cable that the heater is supplied with. This is the cable that the heater is supplied with. As you can see, I've already cut off the ends and put my own 20 amp fuse in line. And then I've also added a cigarette lighter socket. Now keep in mind, the older heater didn't even come with a power cable. I had to actually make my own. I made this long one with the connections that go on the back. A couple other things to note is that this is a six liter fuel cell, whereas this one is only five and a half. And the fuel pumps do look very similar. This one also came with a fuel filter, whereas this one did not come with a fuel filter. So I'll definitely be cutting this tube right here and adding my own filter between the tank and the pump. And lastly, I wanted to mention that the new heater did not come with ducting, whereas the older heater did come with some three inch ducting, which I don't even really use. I ended up upgrading to a much longer, better quality duct and this one reaches from the floor up to the tent on my jeep so i'll leave a list in the description box below of all of the items i think that you should buy as a first time diesel heater owner to set up the heater we'll just take the metal tube that comes in the package with the silencer not much of a silencer if you can see right through it but it's a silencer or muffler if you will and then there's two clamps we'll just go ahead and add a clamp install the muffler into the tube and the other side of the tube will install to the exhaust port of the diesel heater and then i'll add about a half a gallon of diesel so i'm going to tip this thing all the way over and i want to see if this cap holds so you can see it does have a small drip coming out of the cap there so you just want to be careful if this thing tips over you can definitely start spilling out some diesel. All right, so to start this thing up, we first need to apply power to the motherboard. And because this thing hasn't ever been started up, we'll need to prime the fuel system. So now that I've got this plugged in, we'll head over to the controller and we're gonna push this button for three seconds. And that's gonna go into fuel system priming mode. It's gonna give you a countdown of 300 seconds. You can hear that pump priming the fuel system. It only takes about 30 seconds and it's a good idea to do this before you start it up after long periods of time. And I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. So that turns off the fuel pump. And you can hear that audible feedback that it turned off and it said, we wish you a safe journey. This is the power on. We're just gonna turn it on and start the heating process. So right now I can feel some air coming out of here. Definitely not hot yet. I'm gonna move to the back and I can feel and hear the air fan. You can see that fan blade moving on through the holes here of the enclosure. So it's been on for about two minutes now and this thing's really starting to ramp up. You can see some exhaust coming out. It's, it's actually running really rich right now. And I've got a well ventilated area. This is just testing on the bench and we're just gonna see it heat up. So I've heard the fuel pump just now kick on. So right now you can definitely hear this thing kicking to high speed. I'm gonna put it on the max. And here it says that we have 30 degrees Celsius for the room temperature. It looks like our exhaust kind of leaned out and you can definitely hear the fan kick into a high speed. On the exhaust, we got 220. Over here, we have 91. And coming out the center there, we have 300. 
320. And you can definitely hear this thing is definitely kicking into a high gear. And it's definitely ramped up. It's kicking ass now. This is going to be a nice one, duck honey. Yeah. So let's get about a 15 minute update. I want to talk to you a little bit about the controls. So we've been running at full bore for the last 15 minutes and so far it's been doing pretty well. I did want to show you another mode. So this mode here allows you just to switch settings. You can see if I turn it down, this thing will start to throttle way down. And then if I turn it up, it'll start speeding back up. So that's one method of control. The second method of control is you can match the ambient temperatures, which is 30 C to a temperature that you can set. So you hit the gear here and it switches you down. See, I can switch between, whoops. I can switch between two modes, that mode or this mode. And then I have some control where I can adjust the temperature. And this will get the ambient temperature as close to the temperature you set. So with this mode of control, as you can see, it essentially throttled way down and I'm getting ready to turn it off now. So I'm gonna go back to here, let it go all the way back up. You can hear the fuel pump start to speed up, the fans start to pick up and it's producing a lot more heat. You can hear that fuel pump definitely speed up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. So it just gave us some feedback that it stopped heating. So this thing's gonna throttle way down and it may just pick back up. What's happening is it goes through a shutdown cycle where um, the fuel the pump turns off. The heat is still in the heat exchanger. So the fan will rev up and kind of help reject any of that excess heat off of the heat exchanger. And then the shutdown cycle will take somewhere around two to three minutes. So once your controller says that, then you know it's okay to unplug the power supply from the unit because it's completely shut itself down and it's safe to unplug. So to set up the app, you're going to go into the handbook and whether you have Android or iOS, you're going to use your camera to open up the link, download the app. Go ahead and turn on your unit just like that. And then I'm going to hold the gear down for three seconds. It's going to go to the FO. I want you to scroll over until you get to F9. And then it's going to say B dash on. That means your Bluetooth is on. So then you can go ahead and get out of that. Go back by pressing the power on off button. So now that our Bluetooth is on, go ahead and hit the gear and the power button simultaneously for three seconds. This brings you to the Bluetooth screen and this is going to be the address It's 24AA07. So now I'm in the settings on my phone. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the app, click on the app, and then I'm going to make sure that my Bluetooth is on for the app. Allow air heater to access Bluetooth. Then I'm going to go into the app. We're going to go ahead and scan. And then here's the address, the 24AA07, click that. And then we are in to the Bluetooth on the app. So that's how that works. And it's gonna be showing all of the live data. So not right now, I have it just running on the very minimum. It, the heater is just now heating up because we just now started it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off using the app. It says push to turn off the heater and I'll just hold it. And so there you go. I just turned it off using the app. So the app was pretty simple to set up. I thought it was user friendly. You're definitely going to want to get yourself familiar with the app and just get yourself familiar with the heater as well before you take it out on your first trip. Now I'll be giving you guys updates on my winter camping trips when I pull this out. I'll share with you guys any modifications or any updates or information that I learn about the heater. And if you guys want to chime in, start a dialogue in the comments box about the heater. Give me your thoughts on what you think. We're looking at a pretty affordable price, about 200 bucks. It's listed on Amazon right now for 249 with a $50 coupon. You can go ahead and use that. Um, and yeah. That's going to wrap it up for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed all of that and all the details comparing the two heaters. 
And if you're interested, go ahead and check out the links in the description box below. And we will see you out there on the trail camping. Have a good day. We'll see you soon.